Church Lavington presents The Promise. This week, Soar Like an Eagle by Pastor Joshua Azekiwe. Now today, I want us to look at another promise. And this promise is hidden in the Old Testament. And it's the promise that says, And you will sow as high as the eagle. God would want us to sow as high as the eagle. Now this is found in the book of Isaiah chapter 40. Let's read it together from verse 30. In the New King James Version it says, Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall verse 31 but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint let's pray together and father as we look into your word this day as we analyze the promise that you've given us this, uh, this afternoon, Lord, we pray that you may prepare our hearts. We pray that you may allow your Holy Spirit to minister to us, Lord. We pray, everlasting King, that you may just prepare us, Lord, and allow us to articulate the promise that you've given us and enable us, King of glory, to be able to take it and run with it, Lord. Master, I ask you, Lord Jesus, that you shall allow your peace that transcends all understanding to be upon us. That if there be things that are distracting us, if there be things that are worrying us, O oh Lord, if there be worries that you are carrying everywhere, that those worries, O oh God, you'll be able to place them besides us. We thank you and we bless you. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bonas if you are sana. We are looking at the fourth promise that the Lord has given us. And uh, whereas... God has given us such remarkable promises in the world. The few promises that you've looked at in the last few weeks cannot and will not exhaust all the promises that God has given us. When you look at the Bible, we see that there are many other promises in the scripture that probably we may not be able to look at in the following weeks. One of the greatest promises that Jesus gave he said that I'm going to prepare a place for you so that where, you, where I am, Jesus speaking, you too may be also. He continues to say that call upon me on the day of trouble. Now that's a promise from God and I will answer you. For all those who persevere to the end, God is promising all of us shall be saved. And he gives another weird promise. Give and you shall be given shaken together, you know, great measure, that's a promise. And the Bible is full of promises here and there. Amen. So this morning, as I remember the promise that as God has given us, and if you look back at the promises that you've been asking, or I mean learning, you acknowledge one thing, that in all those promises, there is a tag. There is a condition. And unless you're willing to fulfill some of those conditions, then believe you me, even that promise will not be attainable. Bonas if you And this reminds me when I was nine years old, a little boy living in an estate. Where we used to live, we used to have what you call dance parties. And so little boys as we are and little girls as they were, we would organize a dance party. And we would rent, not even rent, ask one of the friends to allow their house to be used as a dance party and usually it used to be the house that had the best music system now in those days music systems were not as available as they are okay so then i was here in this dance party and uh, we had about four of us four four boys lined up here and then four boys four girls lined here and so the plan was that every boy would dance with a girl now i told you earlier you people that you know I'm very poor at dancing. Yeah? And, and I was born, you know, I can't coordinate my limbs. So I was given this girl here to dance. 
And my friend had a girl there and you know that's how it was. Munasemaga sikuizi kumearibika. It was worse those days. Bwana sifiwe. So I was given this girl and uh, they put music wakaeka wimbo ya lingala and everybody was dancing and poor me I'm unable to coordinate my limbs. So I was unable to dance. And guess what happened to me? I was thrown out of the party because they thought I had refused to dance. And I felt so bad to myself that I've been thrown out of the party and I'm one of the organizers of that party. So nikatupo nje. And let me just give you the story about in the, the idea here was that once I I was able to dance that first song with that girl. You know the first see first song. The promise was that now you graduate to the next song with the girl. And this next song was supposed to be a romantic song with the girl. Now these are nine year olds, ladies and gentlemen. And so my motivation was I knew I'm poor at dancing, but I knew the romantic song Ayuataminaweza. Because I desired to hold her. Nine year old, I'm telling you, to hold her and dance with her. But because I failed in the first one, I was unable to attain the next one. That's the culture I came up from. And I'm looking at us this morning and thinking, there are many of us who desire the promises that God has given us this morning. But sincerely speaking, when we look at the conditions, when you look at the tag that is there, you feel you are unable to attain it. And God knowing that you are not able to attain it, hence he's given us the Holy Spirit to empower us, to give us the strength, to give us the counsel so that then we are able to live as God wants. And through that, we are able to attain the promise that God has given us. Bwana sifiwe sana. And so then, ladies and gentlemen, when I look at Isaiah from chapter 40, the one we've read through chapter 30, God's desire is that you may be able to sow as high as eagles. Amen. He's giving us ingredients. If we take them, that if we take them, we'll be able to sow as high as eagles. And in verse 41, I mean, in, verse, in, in chapter 41, verse 40, Isaiah acknowledges something and he says in the New King James Version, Keep silence before me, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near, let them speak. Isaiah is saying that there are some islands that are making noise around you. And is commanding them as a servant of God, keep silent you islands, so that the people are able to renew their strength. In other words, the noise of these islands is inhibiting the people from renewing their strength. So that then they are not able to attain what God has promised in chapter 40 verse 30. And again, let me just read it again. It says, even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young man or the young men shall utterly fall verse 31 says but they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint listen to what verse 31 is saying but they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength. So Isaiah is saying in verse 41 that there are islands that are making noise so that that renewal is not able to be achieved by you or by me and thereby not be able to capture the promise that God has promised us. And the promise is that we may be able to soar as high as eagles. When Isaiah was addressing the children of Israel these people had been captured and they were in Babylon. They were hopeless. They were in slavery. And Isaiah was looking at them and saying, Sawa, you are hopeless. Sawa, you are in slavery. But if you wait upon the Lord, in your slavery 
in your hopelessness, the Lord will sew you up as an ego. I look at us this morning, ladies and gentlemen, I can see our faces. I interact with many of us in this church. And I see hopelessness creeping in many young people who are saying they have no finances to pursue or proceed with their further studies or education. As a result, many of us in this church are, are, are beginning to develop, develop low self-esteem. Some are in depression and some are beginning to have suicidal tendencies. Hopelessness beginning to creep, to creep in. I see hopelessness creeping in amongst our young people still who are feeling like they have no relational or their relationships are going nowhere. And it's becoming worse, especially for our sisters. When you begin to reach the age of 30 and the person you are relating with abandons you and you feel you are too old to get a new guy. And the hopelessness is leading you to want to pick any Dick, Harry or whoever. Or Onyango. I'm interacting with many of us, ladies and gentlemen, who are beginning to get hopeless. You've been to universities, your parents have paid a lot of money, they have sacrificed. And the sort of job you are doing today does not rhyme, if there's a word like that, with the kind of job you are doing. And you're beginning to feel hopeless. You don't know what sort of future you're having or is coming in. I'm seeing hopelessness, brethren. And as I'm saying this, I'm saying this within our context of several people of us, I mean several people amongst us who are beginning businesses. And those businesses don't seem to pick up. And you feel your resources, your capital has been vanished. And you're beginning to get hopeless. Still, there are some of us in this building. You are either been too sick or you're living with sick people or sick person or sick parents or sick brothers and sisters and their constant ailment and sickness has been there for so long and you're now hopeless wondering whether there's any remedy to that situation. My brother, my sister, this, this afternoon we want to tell those islands that are making noise to shut up as, I, as Isaiah spoke in verse 41, in chapter 41. Keep silence, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Amen. It is time we began to tell those islands to keep silent and let the people begin to renew their strength. One as if you were sana. And as I'm mentioning these words, ladies and gentlemen, I'm also preaching to myself. Don't think that we as pastors we don't go through what you people go through. I'm na ona zi tuko karibu na Mungu sana. No. The things you go through are those very things we also go through. And as I can give you one example, la, uh, some few years ago, it wasn't last year, it was a few years ago, when together with my wife we lost income. And for 2 years we lived without an income in the house. Now you're living for two years without an income. You have children, you have house rents, you have bills, they have to eat. And for two years, we stayed without an income. It reached a point and we decided together with my wife that Sawa, the situation is as bad as it is. And we decided to go out to pray and fast. As we were going out to pray and fast, our children were sent out of school because of lack of school fees. And for two terms, they stayed at home. And the only thing we could do was to give them, was just to teach them at home. That's all we could do. And as we went to pray, the Lord spoke to my wife that we go and visit a certain church somewhere. Just maybe as, as a way of just going to, to have fellowship. And so we went to a church in Tarsia. And when we arrived in that church, we met an old friend of my, of, my, of my wife who they were together in Bible school at Negest. We discover that that uh, person was the senior pastor of that church. 
And being the senior pastor, we discovered Kumbe in that church, they have a school. And he being the senior pastor, he was the one in charge of the school. And in talking together, the person said, bring your children and they will not pay even a single cent. Now, guess what? When my children entered that school, having stayed out for two terms without mwalimu or anything, and they are entering a new school, both of them were top ten in class. Hallelujah. So when Isaiah is saying, shut up these islands, shut up you islands, let my people renew their strength, brethren, it is possible. Hallelujah. That same month, now we are excited the children are in school, we are excited they are not paying school fees, and we are happy that the Lord has opened a door. My wife receives a call from an old friend, and she goes, sits an interview, and within two months, she works as the general manager of an institute. From nothing to top there. Shut up, you islands that are making noise. Islands that are making us feel that we cannot renew the strength that the Lord has given us or desires to give us. And so some of the noises that most of us are, are, are hearing are noises that are of worldly standards. Philosophies and worldly standards that are coming up and making all the noise in you. Oh, my brother, umefika 45, aujaoa, umekuisha, you will never get children. Oh, my sister, you are at this age. All this noise that is coming everywhere. And they are creating hopelessness in you. They are creating hopelessness in us. I met a friend of mine in Embakasi and he wanted to start a kiosk. And that was a good idea. But there was a noise that came and the noise was saying, ukianzisha kiosk hapa, lazima ulipe mungiki. And we sat together and said, tutaomba. That was a noise saying that you must pay mungiki to be able to run your kiosk there. And we prayed together with that brother. And for that, for the longest time I stayed in Embakasi, not a single Mungiki person came to demand anything from that kiosk. Shut up! You, know, you, you, you islands of noise. Shut up! Let my people renew their strength. So what noises are there in your life? What noises, what islands are making noise in your life that are allowing hopelessness to begin to creep within you? Some of you think that because of the way the situation is in Kenya, that today you can't get a job unless you bribe. That's a noise. Corruption never started the other day. When I finished my high school, Kenya was at the peak of its corruption. Yet we are still able to get jobs. We are still able to to be employed. Hallelujah. Tuko pamoja. So God intends to renew our strength so that we may soar as high as eagles. Then we need to look at an eagle and draw some understanding on how we are to go about the renewal process. Hallelujah. That because God wants us to soar as high as an eagle, then let us look at that eagle. Let us look at some of the characteristics found in that eagle so that then we are able to prepare ourselves. We are able to get the characteristics helping us understand how best or what ingredients are needed in us so that we too can sow as high as an eagle. Hallelujah. If you want to know why Ibra is a tall brother, find out about him. Amen. Find out what he does. Nitizigani anafanya. That is muscular. Is, you know? Don't look at me. Don't come to me. And I'll tell you. you know? Number one. There is something about an eagle that we need to understand. And, that, and the first thing is that eagles eat very well. Eagles eat very well. Tumelewana. An eagle can never eat a carcass 
killed by another animal. An eagle can never eat rotten meat. It has to kill the prey for itself. Then and only then will it eat it. Is there something we are learning from that? The book of Leviticus chapter 11 verse 8 it says, You must not eat their meat or touch their carcasses. They are unclean to you. Because of the fact that an eagle eats fresh meat, chances of it getting diseases and infections are limited. Hallelujah. And my question this morning to us, including me, what do we feed on? What do we feed on on our daily on a daily basis? We are encouraged to be able to be reading the word of God on a daily basis. Feed on the word of God. Do you have time when you can open the scriptures and just feed on the word of God? Do you belong to a small group? Do you belong to a home fellowship where together you can communally feed on the word of God? I'm on a tegemea, rotten meat. And some of this rotten meat, ladies and gentlemen, are everywhere in our airwaves. You switch on your TV today and you will find rotten meat on our TVs. If that is what you feed on, ladies and gentlemen, then you may know you may never sow as high as an ego. I know of brothers who after five o'clock you may think he's in the office very busy and afanya kazi na nguvu sana and you may think he's doing overtime and some may decide okay because of traffic jams na nini na nini let me spend some more time in the office so that by the time I'm leaving the office at least jam itakoe meisha and as they sit behind their computers they are hooked up to pornography and that is what they feed on day in, day out. No wonder their lives are full of rotten carcasses. What do you feed on as a child of God? Hallelujah. Number two, an eagle has one enemy and an eagle has learned to defeat that one enemy. So if you are to fly as I as an eagle, then learn to defeat the enemy. Learn to defeat the enemy. Many times when the eagle has encounters with his enemy, which is one, it's called the condor. The eagle gets courageous, but it's also very intelligent, very smart. Knowing that the condor is bigger, knowing that the condor is stronger, the eagle never fights the condor because it knows it cannot win the condor. The condor is a bird. And so what it does is that when it meets the condor, it begins to soar towards the direction of the sun so that if the sun is there, it begins to soar high and go facing the sun. Okay? In that process, the condor is unable to follow him. And in the process, the condor gives up. Do we know the weaknesses of our enemy? And our enemy is one. The enemy, Satan, the devil. Do we know how to defeat him? Just as the eagle knows the technique of defeating its enemy, how should we defeat our enemy Satan who wages war against us? There is no way you will sow as long as shaitani amekukalia. Number one, the one way, the three things we need to do in, in, in defeating our enemy, the devil, one, is to acknowledge our position in Christ. Know your position in Christ. In fact, Samuel chapter 22 verse 2 to 4 says, the Lord is my rock my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge and my savior. From violent men, you save me. Is the Lord God your rock? I've never forgotten this instance, seated in an office and speaking to 
a desk mate and she was like I want to get saved but I don't see the purpose of getting saved nataka kuokoka lakini I don't see the why or the reason why I need to get saved why and ask her why it's because akasema that even Christians who are born again who are wanarogwa na wachawi and so to her there's no difference so mimi nikuwe mkristo bado ntarogwa na wachawi nisipokuwa mkristo bado ntarogwa na mchawi this lady never understood the position a christian takes once he's born again the lord god is my rock he that is in me is mightier than he that is in the world ama hata sisi tunaamini hiyo do we also believe that he that is in me is mightier than he that is in the world so acknowledge the position you have in christ and that only comes once you are born again kama haujaokoka you don't have christ and yes mchawi atakufuata number 2 psalms 50 verse 15 says call upon me in the day of trouble and i shall rescue you and you will honor me prayer that once you've acknowledged that this is my position with god this is where i stand in god then at that point i'm able to pray hallelujah at that point i'm able to pray and james chapter 4 verse says resist the devil oh no submit therefore to god resist the devil and he will free he will flee from you that i've acknowledged this is my position with god i have prayed then the bible tells me now resist him and he will flee and in that way then you are like the eagle able to defeat your enemy without necessarily you fighting with the enemy because tukiwachua vita na shaitani none of us can, can accomplish anything hallelujah number three, learn to confront problems amen learn to confront problems hallelujah learn to do what learn to confront problems and an eagle is an expert at confronting problems when a storm comes and storms come in our lives penda usipende and and while the rest of the animals run away from the storms the eagle does not run away one he studies the storm he sees the direction of the wind he sees the direction uh, from where the storm is coming from and he simply does one thing he soars high above the clouds and that way he is able to overcome the storm hallelujah wengine wetu dhuruba zinakuja and the next thing unakimbia hapa unakimbia pale unakimbia here you run there you are everywhere running trying to look for solutions can we be like the eagle to begin to soar high above the storm and i know in your in your minds you are asking me how do i soar high above the storms one is to begin to relate with he that is higher above us and that is christ jesus bona sifiwe i remember when i was uh, when i was just about to get married there are issues that i forgot to deal with and they almost wrecked my wedding day storms were there i was unable to deal with them instead nikazweka chini ya carpet and thinking with times itapotea azipoteagi they will raise their ugly heads in due time and unless you can learn to confront issues learn to confront problems you may never soar as high as an eagle number 4 the eagle has a spectacular vision this is an this is a bird that can see at a, at a height of 10000 feet high and it's able to see a rabbit even if that rabbit is in the midst of trees and once it spots a rabbit at 10000 feet high it begins to attack it at a speed of 200 miles per hour hallelujah because of the spectacular vision that god has given it and this is the spectacular vision that god would want us to have so that when you so as high as wherever god wants to put you your vision is as clear 
as ever before. I know of Christians whom the Lord has raised and the vision that they had for their lives begin to shift. When you wake up in the morning, what drives you to where you're going? What vision do you have for your life? Is it a spectacular one? Or is it blood? Kuna manyunyu. What vision do you have when you come to church for this church? You as a person, do you have a vision for this ministry? Ama hiyo ni mnadhani ni vision ya pastor peke yake. Do you have a vision for your family? Where do you want your family to be in the next five, six years? Is there a vision? So that when the Lord one day puts you up, your vision is as clear and as sharp as it has ever been. Hallelujah. Who a vision? The Bible says in Joel chapter 2 verse 28, and afterward I God will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. What vision do you have, ladies and gentlemen? The Bible says that without vision you will perish. Na wengine wetu tunapiga gato round tu. We have no vision. We are just there. And you don't know that you are perishing. Number five. The eagle is an animal of commitment. Hello? Tuko pamoja? The eagle is an animal of The eagle is an animal of commitment. And eagles commit to maintain lifetime relationships. Now the scientists have studied it. And they've seen that an eagle commits to maintain lifetime relationships so that if it relates, it is until death does it apart. And my question this morning, ladies and gentlemen, is what's, what commitments do you have? What happens if tomorrow the circumstances will change? Will you still be committed to God? A friend of mine wanted to to get a good job. Let me not say where it was. And we've been serving the Lord together since high school. Tumekuwa tuna serve Mungu kabisa. And it came this time when she was to get this job and she would fly out of the country and the job would pay her good money. But the condition was that she had to abandon her commitment to God. Why? Because the farm was being run by a Muslim and she abandoned her commitment to God to follow the money. The Lord wants you today to rise and sow as an eagle. And God is asking you, are you willing to be committed? Are you willing to be committed to God and ministry? Are you willing to be committed to family and friendship? Are you willing to be committed to that business that you are beginning? That despite the storms, despite what is going to happen, you will be committed and focused. Years ago when I was working again, I remember sitting behind the counter and this woman came because I was working in a cooperative society. She came uh, with a loan application and uh, she was told if you go to these people because your, your loan is an emergency loan, it will be processed faster. And so she came and I was seated there. So me kuka naona uyu mama namjua. And when I saw her, she looked at me and she said, Uyu kijana namjua. And so we knew one another. But as I saw her, I was reminded of things that she used to do to me when I was a child in the estate. This was a lady, akinipata nimeka inje ya mlango yake, nitachapwa kiboko. And she hated, okay, my understanding was that she hated me. I used to be a very big boy. But I used to be also very fast. And so a few times she has tried to chase me and I used to outrun her. She hated me. And when I saw her come with that loan application, I remembered the hatred that she had against me. And I know I did a wrong thing, but I refused to help her. She waited for three weeks for that process to go through. I was in a position to help her to get it in within 48 hours. But because she had no commitment to 
me while I was a young person she paid a price for it bonus if you are there commitments that you're breaking today in your lifetime i mean in your family and friendship number 6 and this is the second last one the eagle knows where to build the eagle will not build its nest anywhere it has specific places where it builds its nest hallelujah hautaipata imejenga ka nyumba ti hapa kwa hii miti alafu kesho kutwa imeenda imejenga ka nest siji kwa ile miti gani and then it doesn't do that it gets a place and the place has to be a solid rock foundation that is high preferably a high mountain and at that point it will build its nest bona si fiwe and my question to us today and particularly our young people who are looking to how they can start building their lives what is the foundation of the life you're putting up with this uh, this sixth uh, statement is almost to me equal like uh, as there's the fifth one where as young men we fail to commit our lives or we fail to commit to relationships and today you are committed to this sister tomorrow you are committed to this sister the other day you are committed to this person where are you building your foundation where is your commitment people who come and they hope from one church to the other hope they will go hope kesho uko kanisa lingine natoka ile kanisa lingine umerudi hope by the time you are coming to hope we have gone to another level you go out again by the time you come back to hope we are in another level an eagle knows we have to build if you are purposing to build your foundation or to build your growth in hope church then let it be i know of people who come to this to this church who are coming from very far because they purposed that this will be the place where they're going to build their spiritual foundation and lastly the eagle is an excellent discipler hello the eagle is an excellent discipler for those of us who observe the eagle you'll notice one thing that inafika wakati mwingine where it discovers that the child in the nest is now of age and you know what the eagle does it picks that child and it throws it up in the air that's a katoto kanajaribu and when it notices that the child i mean the the eaglet sorry not the child when the eaglet is about to hit the ground it comes and rescues it it does that 3 4 times and by the fifth time the eaglet knows how to fly the eagle is an excellent discipler amen and i know right now many of us are feeling like you are in that situation where it's like god has taken you up and thrown you up and you are there wondering unaomba unalia nini 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 but in due time god will come and rescue you the fifth the sixth time when the lord does that you will know how to fly and that way be able to soar as high as a eagle my question this morning to us is the day you die and all of us here will die hallelujah i know it is wrong to say that in the african culture but we will die all of us and if we don't die then we will rapture so it's either we rapture or we die whichever comes first that's god's business But if it is true that all of us will die what will people remember you for Sikwile tunakuzika na tunaandika eology what will people remember you for Oh alienda shule alipoenda shule akapata kazi alipopata kazi akazaa watoto alipozaa watoto akafa Is that all that God created you for But remember when you disciple somebody when you pour out your life to somebody when that person becomes like you this is what will reward you in heaven i look at my brother bernard litwachi who in the process even has he has gone higher he has discipled many awana leaders 
that his life was poured out to many awana leaders so that even if the Lord takes him today there will be no crisis in the church because they are able people who are following him bwana sifiwe wewe leo mungu akikuchukua hata shetani atafurahi i'm happy you took him toa huyo what impact are you leaving in the lives of people as an ego whom are you discipling as at now so once you are capable of feeding on the word of god you are able to defeat the enemy you are able to confront problems you have an excellent vision you know where to build and you are a discipler the lord says and i will renew your strength and so as high as an ego and at this point once you are high there ladies and gentlemen there is something that the lord would want to begin to do with you he's not just showing you high and you want to go high but he's showing you high because he has a purpose that he'd want to to accomplish